What's this unfinished business between you and the bear? Ah, <laughs> me and the old bear. Every time we meet, we make a little trade. And what do you trade? <laughs> Each other's blood, mostly. Sounds like a losing proposition. Oh, I'm sure it will be. For one of us. The dam was pretty busted up, like you said. Place was cracked open by the quake years ago and never recovered. It was already half dead at the time. Meaning? The dam dates back to the 60s. Industrialists from the mainland wanted to use it to power a mining town he was planning to build. But the bottom fell out of the price of coal, and he had to abandon those plans. Some fool tried to get it running again in the 80s, but then the forest talkers got involved, and that was the end of it. Pretty sure the Quakes finished the job once and for all. The main reason I'm out here is I'm looking for someone. <laughs> you won't find too many people out here. That's kind of the whole point. This is someone important to me. A woman. She may have passed through here a few days ago. She might have been injured. What makes you think she came through here? She passed through the tunnel leaving Milton, but then... I'm not sure. Well, the roads from Milton don't lead this way. Wherever she's headed, you'll have to cross the mountains to find her. Not an easy path, even for the most experienced outdoorsman. I'll do whatever it takes. Well, you won't get far with that bear on the prowl. What we need is to get my radio up and running so we can find out what the hell is going on. Maybe someone out there has seen your friend. The woman I'm looking for. She might be on her way to a place called Perseverance Mills. You know it? Yeah. Shit nothing town, north part of the island. Sounds about right. Yeah, I know it. We were on our way there, my passenger and I, when we crashed. I need to find a way to get there, or contact her. See if she's all right. You sure she's alive? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, well, normally I'd make some calls on the old shortwave. Whole area's been damn quiet since those lights in the sky. Even the wildlife's acting strange. But I might have an idea. So... Who are the forest talkers? Eco-terrorists. Activists, some call them. Depends on who you talk to, I guess. Why are they out here? Well, they've been active for years. They come and go. Mostly here to throw a wrench in the works for a variety of resource projects, mining, forestry mainly. They want Great Bear to remain a pristine wilderness. <laughs> you don't sound like you agree. Oh. I have no love for industry, but this is the way of the world. You have something they want, they take it. Nothing much you can do to stop it. Well, judging by what I saw in the dam, I'd say the forest talkers are still active. Well, that's good news for you. Keep your eyes open for supply caches they might have left behind. You said you had an idea. What do you have in mind? Well, it's a long shot. But I may know how we can find out about your friend. I'm listening. This shortwave. I use it to keep an ear open for what's going on. So how do we get the radio working? There's no reason I can see why it shouldn't be working. Well, what about more parts? Or another radio? We might find another radio, but I think I have a better idea. Problem is, it's no use with the old bear out there. Your path to a working radio, and our survival, is through that bear. We have to find a way to deal with him first. What do you mean the wildlife's acting strange? You live out here long enough, 
You get a sense for the patterns in nature. Right now, the patterns are broken. Critters aren't behaving the way they should. It's like they're spooked or something. No, not spooked, but changed somehow. Best way I can say it is, things don't feel right. Can you tell me anything about where we are? Well, this whole area takes its name from Mystery Lake nearby. It's kind of a wilderness preserve, though you wouldn't know it from the logging trucks. Not much around there, apart from some lake cabins that'll be locked up for the season. You've already seen the dam. Railroad passes through the area. Trains come through once in a while. Fewer every year. Whole area's mostly dead. Most of the year. You sound like you like it that way. <laughs> yeah. I sure do. So, no other people living out here? You gotta understand. The Collapse destroyed Great Bear. There's nothing here to stay for. You meet anyone out here? Chances are they're hiding from something. Or someone. And you? Why are you here? I have my reasons. Okay. So we have to deal with the bear. But you're half dead, and rifle shots don't seem to do much. So... That's because the old bear... He's special. I've been hunting and trapping for years, and I've shot a lot of bears. But I've never encountered anything quite like him. A special bear like that needs special magic to bring him down. Uh, magic? <laughs> don't worry. I'm not delirious. I don't mean literal magic. But we need the old knowledge. The old ways. What do you have in mind? There's an old story, local legend maybe, about one of the original settlers of this place, Spence. The story goes something like this. Spence shows up and sets up his claim shanty with his young family in tow. For generations, the family had been traders in the Hudson's Bay Company. Old voyageur stock, they say. Hard people, survivors. One day, a bear shows up and menaces the homestead. Spence takes a shot at the bear, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Bear wanders off, but Spence's wife, she takes a turn, slips into fever. For days, delirious, she screams about the bear. Local doctor can't do a thing for her, neither can the priest. Week later, hired hand goes missing, and they find him. Just a body, ravaged. Spence fears for his wife and kids. He's convinced some evil bear spirit is trying to kill them. Revenge for some slight in the past, maybe. Something in the family history. Spence gets some men together for a hunting party. They go out into the muskeg and track something big for days. Eventually corner it. Ah, it's a big son of a bitch. Biggest bear they'd ever seen. Man killer. Story goes, they empty their rifles into the bear and it just walks away, like it's made of stone. They call it the demon bear after that. Wife's dying now. Spence believes the bear's evil spirit is killing her, eating her soul. He can't get anyone to join him on another hunting party. They know rifles don't work. So he forges a spear, like a boar spear, but bigger. From some old Hudson's Bay trapper's wisdom, apparently. He goes out into the muskeg, disappears for days. And then one morning, the wife's fever breaks. But nothing from Spence. Some men go out looking for him. And they find him. Half dead. Blood all over him. Body torn almost in two. The bears work. The last thing he says is, Spear stole the bear's soul. 
My wife is now free. And then he's gone. So, did he kill the bear? Nobody knows. Never found a carcass. They buried Spence, took the spear back, and hung it over the mantelpiece in the Spence homestead. Never saw that bear, or any other, again. Years later, after the Spence family faded to obscurity, wealthy land baron bought the spear to hang in his hunting lodge. Just so he could tell that story, I imagine. So, do you believe it? The story of the demon bear and the spear stealing its soul? <laughs> no, of course not. I, I might spend all my time alone in the wilderness, but I'm not crazy. But the old stories sometimes have truths hidden in them. Spence might have been superstitious, but he had the right idea. Ten inches of cold, hard steel might do what a bullet can't. I'm convinced. A spear's the way to kill that bear. And you need to get Spence's bear-killing spear if we're going to survive the winter. The old hunting lodge is still there. A couple of days' journey south. Follow the tracks the other way, through the muskeg, and you'll find it. If the spear's there, get it. It might be our best hope. And the radio? You deal with the bear, and let me worry about the radio. <coughs> now... Oh, let me rest. Good luck out there. Watch out for our demon. Right.
Wonder if this is any good to eat.